Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. And uh, I welcome you to this broadcast. And I just believe that this short broadcast is going to bring an absolute clarity about soul ties. Because in life, you have a different soul ties. And I've seen over my 34 years in ministry or so, uh, sometimes people cannot shake off emotional uh, damage. Uh, God bless you, Sharon. God bless you. And sometimes our emotions can be controlled uh, by the disappointments of life. So what we are going to do in the next 10 minutes, okay, uh, we're going to uh, minister on, uh, let me just see here, unhealthy uh, soul ties. Then we're going to minister on how to be healed. That's right. And we're also going to look at, I'm just bringing it up on your screen there. Let me just move this down there. There we go. We're going to go through these pointers. And we're going to also look at what the Word of God is saying to us in all this. Now, let's start off uh, with, uh, let me just see here. There's someone else saying good morning. That is wonderful, wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. All right. You pray for us. I'm learning all these new things, new programs, and sometimes maybe something might pop up on your screen and it shouldn't be there. Just pray for me. Many, many hours has gone into, uh, you know, uh, investing into a new program because I want to give you the best. All right. Let's get into the Word. Uh, because, uh, like over here now, that screen popped up, and I don't know uh, what that screen is about, but let's see if we can get it off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now, let's look at... That's amazing. That screen keeps popping up there. Isn't that something how... The enemy can just want to try and, you know, harass you with something. All right. Anyway, let's let's move on here. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, it's very clear. The Bible says, be sanctified in spirit, soul, and body. Now, uh, spiritual, uh, there are spiritual Emotional ties. I wish, hi, bless you, brother, Colin, all the way from Africa. The moment, the minute I click on this one box, something else comes up. <laughs> oh, you know, let's see if we can. No, that doesn't work either. Let's see if we can get back there. Okay. All right. Some for some reason it wants to have me twice on the screen, <laughs> so just bear with me. Uh, because let me just see if I can click that off here. All right, uh, hopefully, we can do that. Let me see here and get that thing off the screen. It's amazing how these new programs. Hopefully, this will work. All right. Okay, great. Now, soul ties in 1 Samuel 18, 1 Samuel 18, verse 1, and I'm turning there. Okay, 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. It talks about, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. There was a connection between Jonathan and David. That is right. There was a powerful connection between uh, Jonathan and David. See, that screen keeps coming up there. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway, just bear with me. Hopefully, somehow, 
Next time we'll get that thing off in Jesus' name. So Jonathan, uh, his soul was knitted together with David's soul. It was a healthy soul time. Why? Because they had each other's interest at heart. They had covenant. And because they had covenant, they wanted to protect each other in the Lord and do the best as if unto God. That's a healthy soul time. Now, a spiritual, emotional uh, connection to someone can develop after intimacy. You know, uh, the Bible is very, very clear. A man and a woman, they will become one in marriage. And that comes through intimacy. But there's a serious warning in 1 Corinthians, and I'm turning there my Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let me just see there. Uh, verse 16, verse 16, Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, they shall become one flesh, And but he who is joined to the Lord is one in spirit with God. Hallelujah. Now, having said that, you have to understand that, Kathy, God bless you. I just see that now. Hallelujah. Bless you. Um, and thank you for that encouragement because there was something popping up on the screen all the time. All right. But pray for me. I'm learning all this new stuff. So uh, when a prostitute has a, 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 a relationship or uh, intimacy with somebody else, or anybody has intimacy, whatever is in that person's mind, spirit, soul, body, is imparted unto you. You withdraw from that relationship or the individual, and you begin to have all these harassing thoughts. You think, where in the world has this come from? I've never been like this. Well, there was an unhealthy relationship, and because of an unhealthy, uh, uh, immoral relationship, there's an impartation when prostitutes continue with their situation, to, and men or women, and they have intimacy, and then... Uh, they, uh, there's an impartation, the Bible says, uh, and they become one in spirit as much as the emotions, physical uh, realm as well. So you've got to guard your soul against these things. Now, a, a, a soul tie, a soul tie is, uh, it's an emotion that keeps thinking about that situation, you just cannot shake it off your mind. And you've got to be so cautious, okay? A soul tie will harass the emotions in your mind, and you will kind of feel those butterflies coming over you. There's nervousness. There's like an intimidation, and you don't want to think about it, and you keep thinking about it. And uh, so those emotions, they will keep creeping in. God bless you, uh, Pastor Kenneth, uh, all the way in Africa. God bless you. And so uh, a soul tie uh, needs boundaries because there are healthy soul ties. A husband and a wife who serves God, they will have a soul tie, not just one another with God, but with each other. And healthy soul ties is always to glorify our God in heaven. That's a healthy soul tie. That's a healthy soul tie, okay? Now, an unhealthy soul tie causes emotional pain. 
emotional pain is an unhealthy soul time. It begins to become like a problem in your soul realm and it, it begins to oppress you or depression comes over you. That is an unhealthy soul time. Pornography Pornography is an unhealthy soul tie through a spirit of lust, having intimacy through your emotions with somebody that is a fixation or watching pornography on computer, on the internet, etc. And that's a strategy of the devil to put a lust uh, emotional tie after something will because the flesh is out of control and so lust the purpose of lust is to paralyze your um, uh, your spiritual relationship with God you see those that will lust after power lust after money uh, immoral lust uh, it paralyzes your effectiveness towards God and it's an unhealthy soul time and it's a soul time that needs to be dealt with uh, because unhealthy soul ties is not of the Lord amen and then I did say this is a short broadcast but I wanted to get this in so the broadcast is not about three minutes or so and uh, watch out for depression Watch out for depression. Depression is a serious sign that something is wrong with your soul. Remember, beloved, that when your soul that is supposed to be sanctified, purified, according to 1 Thessalonians, was it 1 Thessalonians 5, 22 or 23? Uh, I believe it should be 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Let me just see here. Make sure, yes. Now may the God of peace, peace, himself sanctify you completely in spirit, soul, and body and preserve you and so forth. So here's the thing. An emotional tie that is outside the boundaries of glorifying God causes an inward pain. That's right. An inward pain. And it will cause you to become depressed eventually and it begins to paralyze your uh, passionate emotions in serving God it suppresses it and then you kind of withdraw in wanting to be on fire for the Messiah now having said that we are gonna also touch briefly on something else because they are obviously a solution to this as well beloved remember lust is a huge enemy tactic that paralyzes your uh, what can I say your momentum and intimacy with God very important the enemy if he can cause you to lust after things and lust after uh, you know uh, the opposite, uh, you know, like men uh, can lust after women and women can lust, uh, lust after men, and, but you can lust after materialistic things. Uh, it paralyzes your effectiveness of purity in maintaining a peaceful relationship between you and God. That's 1 Thessalonians 5. It's very important. Now, uh, there is a time for everything. Amen. There is a time for everything in life. Okay. And we're going to, and I'm going to turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, yeah. Ecclesiastes 3. That should be about verse 1 to 8. I'm not sure. Did I? I don't have it on the screen there, but that's okay. Okay. Uh, let me just say this. Or, or let me go into this. Uh, excessive mourning can become an oppression. There is a time to mourn, absolutely. And we need to mourn, and we need to go through the process when you lose a loved one. Like we have lost loved ones, more than one, there's a process. 
and you work your way through it prayerfully. But watch this now. You see, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes says, uh, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, and a time to plan, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, that means you kill off the things that doesn't glorify God. And I'm talking about sinful habits and a time to heal. Okay, there's a time to weep, verse 4, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. There's a time and a season for everything. Stay within that season of God. Amen. Stay within that season of God. Otherwise, you will carry the whole world on your shoulders. How do you get healed? You pray and you ask God for forgiveness towards anybody that I'm going to off the morning side. I'm going to say, let's two people broke up or maybe there's been an emotional tie between a young person and an older person. And uh, uh, let's say there's been an unhealthy relationship. God bless you. Johan and Annette, all wonderful, great people. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, you see, if there's been any unhealthy soul tie, what is an unhealthy soul tie? It reduces your effectiveness with God. It's an unhealthy soul tie. A healthy soul tie is something that will help you to become better. Your spiritual mentor, you can develop a soul tie in a spirit realm with them, but make sure it glorifies God. Amen. When you have, uh, uh, when you have your children and you as a parent can have soul ties, make sure it is healthy that you do not bring in the baggage from your past disappointments into your new generation, your first offspring that you're producing, because that can damage their future. Amen. So to deal with unhealthy uh, uh, soul ties. To deal with unhealthy soul ties, I have to leave right now because I have another very important broadcast, but this I had to get out, okay? I have a, a video conference and I have to go. But let go and let God ask for forgiveness. Forgive that person and forgive yourself and put the cross of Calvary between you and the past. Amen? And... Uh, uh, remember, excessive mourning eventually can break your heart. And when you break your heart, you can actually injure your health. Amen. Pray and say, God, I ask you to heal my soul. Lord, forgive those that have hurt me and disappointed me. I release them unto you in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. I have to let you go. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Bye now.